I've just been kind of getting more detail on precisely what was it that lay behind the bank's intervention, an incredibly unusual intervention for them to go in and start buying up specific government bonds because they noticed dysfunction in the market, essentially that part of the market not working. Well, what are the pragmatic consequences? What's the pragmatic story that lies beneath that? Well, I'm told that what they were responding to is, is what internally has been described as a run dynamic. What does that mean? It's very similar in kind of wholesale terms to what we saw with Northern Rock when there was that run on that bank uh, back in 2007. Uh, it's a, a vicious cycle, essentially, people trying to withdraw money, uh, which in turn leads sometimes inevitably to financial collapse. And I'm told that there were a number, a swathe of pension funds that were it not for the government's intervention would have essentially collapsed, been insolvent by this afternoon. That's how fast moving this crisis in the pensions market was. It's the gilts market that lies underneath the defines benefits pensions schemes, all of whom are reliant on that market uh, for their funding and for the structure of their investments. Uh, the scale of that crisis is gradually becoming clearer. The bank was responding to what it conceived, conceived to be a run on that system, on that part of the financial system, and believed there would have been insolvencies across the pension system this afternoon. So in a matter of hours, had it not responded, it has responded. You've seen a big reaction in those markets where the bank has gone and started to buy those securities. But it is an extraordinary day. It's an extraordinary event. And of course, it comes after the extraordinary moves in financial assets that we've seen since uh, the announcements from the government on Friday. That triggered uh, a mass sell-off of many of these assets, which of course is leading to this uh, virtuous or rather vicious cycle facing many pension funds around the country. Remember, textbook macroeconomics says that for a country like the UK, which borrows in its own currency, uh, has an open economy, uh, a large and increase, you know, increasing the budget deficit should push up the pound, um, as it did, for example, um, um, in the early years of the Reagan presidency. Um, that's because the assumption is that an independent central bank will raise interest rates in order to attract money into the country to finance the budget deficit, hence pushing up the currency. Um, so why is the pound? Why did the pound initially fall? Well, that's what my former Treasury colleague Dario Perkins called the, quote, more on risk premium, unquote. In other words, that the people running the British economy at the moment, uh, the Chancellor and the Prime Minister, are so incompetent that you simply don't know what they're going to do next, and therefore that there's a big risk premium baked into the currency. I mean, the reality is these are uncosted estimates, and they just don't look credible. So the question is, if, you, if you're the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and what you've done is you've stood up and you've crashed the markets, you've crashed the bond market, you've crashed the foreign exchange market, the stock market's dropped, the housing market's in trouble, and you created a giant recession because the Bank of England has to raise rates. Um, your credibility is, is completely trashed. And what's the Prime Minister going to say? Well, at the moment, she appears to be hiding. But the questions that journalists like you and Ian King and everybody else and, and Ed Conway and others are going to ask is, so what are you going to do? It's all completely failed, hasn't it? They told you it was going to fail and it has. Now what are you going to do? And obviously the question then is politically, does she survive the month? Does she actually get to? And does he get to this statement in two months time? Because presumably politically, they've created a disaster and you'll, um, is there even an issue? Could you actually get this through the House of Commons? Unclear. I have never seen anything like this. I've been an economist for 50 years. I went through the Great Recession. I have never seen such raging incompetence ever. This is not a sterling crisis. It's not a dead crisis. Britain is not Greece. It's not Argentina. You issue the currency in which you borrow. And that means that um, uh, you are never going to have the problems that Greece had or Argentina did. But this is an interest rate crisis, because at the moment, we have inflation running at around 9-10% in the United Kingdom. We have a current account deficit of 8%. And now we have this uh, remarkable lar largesse lavished by Liz Truss on the wealthy. Uh, the, the Bank of England knows that with these numbers, to stabilize the market for public debt for gilts on the one hand and the value of the pound, it, it should push interest rates to 6%. This is my estimation of what would now stabilize the money markets in Britain. But that would break like a toy the housing market. It would uh, cause untold hardship upon you know, the middle classes that have 
uh, indebted themselves hugely over the last 10 years. The British economy has been addicted to low interest rates. Uh, and now, given the fiscal largesse of this government, which um, is a rookie mistake, I have to make this point, I think. Um, nevertheless, you know, the Bank of England now is forced. Uh, it has to push interest rates up okay. very quickly. Uh, what they did today was to buy some time by reversing uh, quantitative tightening and, you know, doing more QE. Uh, but now you have a situation where the Bank of England is going to raise interest rates until the housing market does break. OK, so just briefly, historically you've been no fan of the IMF, but you're, from the sounds of it, you're suggesting that actually what they're doing here is right. Do you agree with them that the UK government should reconsider the measures they've taken? Oh, absolutely. I very much fear, however, that this Chancellor is going to make a bad thing worse that he's unwilling to reverse course and what he will do is precisely the wrong thing. He's going to cut welfare payments and public investment, making it much harder for Britain to, re to recover. We've no idea where Liz Truss is, we've no idea where the Chancellor is. Tory MPs are hiding and every news organisation is trying to get ministers to come on and talk about the chaos that's reigning. So the fact that they're hiding is a really a really bad thing. And today's a big anniversary as well, not just 1972, but 28th of September 1976 was when Dennis Healy went to Heathrow Airport and the markets collapsed so much he had to come back to Downing Street, right. go to the IMF. And the IMF has intervened um, in the last 24 hours saying, you know, you've got to reverse these policies. So we're seeing chaos in the markets. Well, but the numbers of us warned, I wrote a whole series of right. columns warning that this was coming uh, a month ago, saying, you know, you, the, the problem is the markets will actually prevent amateurs doing stupid things. They haven't prevented it, but now we're having to see right. these organisations intervene, the Bank of England, but we, we are now in chaos.